Let's go do an example for Port Expert. So with Port Expert, again, it's just like just like the Blade Expert. It's all about levels of automation. So let's go ahead and give it a try here. I'm going to go ahead and do a Port Expert. Uh, I already have a stock model defined. I didn't create a tool, so let's just go ahead and create a tool. I'm going to create a lollipop tool here. I'm going to select Next. Let's give it a dimension, probably about a quarter inch in diameter. And that'll make the shank here a little smaller. I'll make them like 3 16 and the cutting depth, I'm just going to go and leave them at a quarter inch. That that should do it right there. I'm going to select OK to this. Holder. We probably should get an extended holder here. Let me pick another library. What did I do wrong here? Open a library. I want to just open up a library here. don't know why it was asking me if I wanted to save the file. And yeah, probably somewhere around here, uh, we probably should have... Some nice good extended tool holders that taper tool holders that are pretty pretty common to use when you're doing blade expert like this. How about we use that one right there? And I'm gonna bring the projection down to the tool. And then for the stock, oops, let's let's go to a roughing tool path here. We're gonna rough it out first. And we're gonna go ahead and use the, the stock model that we have predefined already. And then um, do a roughing. I'm gonna leave it. Leave, it, leave, leave plenty of material on the outside here. And then we're going to, instead of going from both directions, we're just going to say from the top. And we're going to try to take this uh, tool as far as it can down from the top. I'm going to let the system calculate how far down that tool can go down that, uh, that shape right there, which we're fixing to define. I'm going to open up the tolerance here. And then, oh. The machining geometry is right here. I'm going to go ahead and just pick, again, what defines that shape right there. I'm going to pick everything that's inside that area right there. That looks pretty good. I kind of like that. Keep it pretty simple. I again, uh, we don't have to go create extra geometry. If I say in my selection here, it's going to automatically create the spline. If you were doing this with, say, like a unified toolpath, you would have to create your upper and lower guide curves. Then you would have to draw a spline that defines the middle of that shape. And then you would have to make those selections to uh, to get your toolpath control um, doing it that way. Just as an example, I don't have to do any of that. This is a really nice tool, a really nice toolpath here. Uh, collision control, everything else looks okay. I'm just make sure that I'm in the top plane. I'll select okay this. Oh, my stock definition. I do not want to I do not want to close this. I thought I selected that. I forgot to hit that button right there. We'll select okay to this. Give it a second here. And then let it calculate a tool path. There we go. Nice little tool path there. I think it went it went pretty far, you know. That's uh that's pretty good. I'm kind of unrendering it. We'll go up here and uh, run the back plot. Tool comes down and it's gonna start to. Ooh, I got this going pretty fast. Slow them down a bit. And the tool is just cutting there. Let's go to the verify on this one. And I think I have my stock correct. I've been I have been working with this file here, so we'll go ahead and cut this. This seems to be. This seems to look just fine. I can't believe that tool made it all the way down, almost all the way through there. We can control that and say, you know, we wanted to not go that far. You know, just uh, being conservative, we'll just go to the midpoint. Recalculate that. And we'll go ahead and back plot that here in a second. There we go. And if I unrender that. That only went so far down. And then we can go verify that again or yeah, run it through verify. There's our tool right there. That looks that looks pretty good. Run the stock compare here, make sure we're not hitting anything. And again, I left made sure I left plenty of material there. Alright. I don't think my stock model is matching up my my actual model here right now. I knew I was miss I was messing around with them earlier. Okay, and then the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to rotate 
to some will go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Um, I'm going to go ahead and use Transform Toolpath. Kind of show you that you can. You know, we do have, just like the other one, um, I, there was a point I was making to this as far as like if you wanted to uh, go to utilities here and if you want to transform these in a number of times, this is still good here. But then I've also been asked, uh, like, can you still incorporate regular old toolpaths with this? So, yeah, I forgot the number. One, two, three, four. Oh, let me go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. If I do a regular transform toolpath, right, we're going to rotate this. I'm going to rotate the NCI. Um, I will copy the source operation, let's say 10 more times, and we'll go 360 divided by 11, right? If for some reason you want to do it this way, you most, you most absolutely can. We'll do this around the top, and then we have the rest of the toolpaths here, okay? The things that we can do when it's transforming is then we then can control if we needed to have like, if. A lot of times we're doing this, these type of toolpaths, the multi-action toolpaths. Then this is the reason why I brought up using the transform. You may need to add an extra toolpath before and after, say a point position of where it goes to and where it comes out. You need more of that control. And if you need that additional information, and if you just do the internal transform here, you're not going to get that. So doing an external transform like I just did now, Gives you that gives you that option. We'll go ahead and select all, verify this, and we'll go ahead and run it. I knew there was a reason why I did the transform. I just it just my mind went blank there for a second, but there is a reason for it. All right, so we're going around just doing some rough tool paths. That looks pretty good, like so. And then um, we'll let this finish. Then we'll do another stock compare real quickly. Everything is looking pretty good there. And then we can just take, uh, actually, I'm just going to take this toolpath. I'm going to copy it. I'm going to be bold here. I'm just going to copy it afterwards. And if we wanted to change the strategy to, say, a finish around, I'm going to still leave materials just in case we need to come back with a smaller tool. Let's say I leave uh, 50 thousands here. Just have it take material off. I'm not going to change anything else. Just select OK to this. And let it calculate that toolpath. Let me turn those toolpaths off. And then we backlog just this one. Oops. Sorry. That one was ghosted up because I did the copy here. Backplot him. And now he's doing a little finished toolpath. I should probably lower that down a bit um my step over should probably be a little less but we do 10 for the exercise and select okay and then we'll back plot that and that looks starting to look pretty good right there i like it doing some ramping in up there so, uh, so let's go ahead and uh I'm going to transform this toolpath. I'm just going to say copy, copy the transform over, and then just pick the previous operation again. And if I pick both transforms, and I'll run to verify one more time, and let's see how this looks like. All right. Let this run. Got some nice good step overs here. And I and I purposely did not um, pick the top fillets and so forth for the exercise today. It's just a matter of speed. I know we only have a certain amount of time and I'm trying to cover everything that I can here. So now it's gonna go ahead and finish the ports. That looks pretty nice. It found out where the rest of the model was at. I think we're probably tapping that higher stock because I knew that I noticed that stock a little higher longer than what I had there so it might it might look a little odd but for the most part 
That looks pretty clean right there. Again, just real quickly, just uh, it didn't take didn't take me a lot of uh, geometry selection. I definitely didn't have to create any geometry. Not saying you don't have to. There, there might, you know, depends on the model. You might get a, a model that's, you know, that can be challenging, and we've all run into that, and we still have to create some extra geometry. But when it comes to the actual toolpath, it should be okay. I think I may have bumped into this, but stock is not exactly correct there. But for the most part, yep, that's what I thought. My stock's kind of high, but the toolpath itself looks nice and clean right there. All right.